Here's you are now. Hello, hello, hello. I am Tara from Living on a Dime, Two Girl Rich, the author of the Dining on a Dime cookbook. Right here, 25% off, guys. Grab it. I have around 300 left. I may or may not be on. Who knows? Am I here or am I not here? Hello, everybody. I am Tara from Living on a Dime, Two Girl Rich. The author of the Dining on a Dime cookbook where you can eat better, spend less. Grab yours now, 25% off. I have about 300 books left at this price, $22. The price is going up, guys, significantly because of the printing issues that we've been having. So if you want it for $22, if you want it for under $30, you need to grab it now. Don't say I didn't warn you. I've been warning you and I'm warning you now. So best cookbook on the planet will save you tons and tons of money it's worth two hundred dollars it really is because it will save you that much money all right potato salad page 213 right here dining on a dime this is volume one if you're watching this in six months this is volume one this is perfect potato salad the absolute best potato salad you will ever eat this is, is this grandma's recipe? I don't know if this is grandma or mom's recipe. All right, dear, I need you. Okay, so first you're gonna take your potatoes. Now, I need you, huh? Okay, so Mike is putting the link in the description below for the cookbooks, it is also in the description, the recipe on our website. So you're just gonna peel your potatoes, okay? Now, I take just a grocery bag. If you have newspaper, is what my mom used to use, but nobody has newspapers anymore, so. Um, just take a grocery bag. If you use newspaper, you can just take this whole thing and throw it in the compost. I don't get newspaper, so I just put it on the plastic bag, then I just take this whole thing out, dispose of it straight into my garden, and there you go. Do the same thing with your carrot um, trimmings. You can do that. Now, I compost in place in the garden, meaning what, Tara? That means that I just throw all my garden refu refuse, 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 all my garden trash. All my garden compost, I just throw it straight in the garden and just let it break down right there. I don't have a compost pile here. I love composting. I used to be the composting queen. Love, love, love compost. But I don't have one here, so I just throw it straight into my garden. Okay, so not that bad. Now, we're going to rinse off potatoes. Then what you're going to do is you're going to got the amateur at the camera today yes we have the amateur at the, at the camera today so then what we're going to do <laughs> is we're going to cut this into potato salad pieces okay so what you want is about that big can you see that about an inch okay mm -hmm. so you want about an inch now there are only three of us here today and only two of us like potato salad but I am making extra for our lunches for the next several days. I don't know, three, four days. And probably breakfast because I just discovered that my favorite breakfast eggs, my daughter swiped the last of the eggs for her trip. Her and my son took a trip today and so I have no eggs, but that's okay. Now, if you don't like eggs, leave the eggs out. I love eggs, but Mike doesn't, so I don't make my potato salad with eggs for him. All right, so then we got all these, and I think that's it. Then, doop -doo 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 -doo. no, that's not it. <laughs> that's not even close to being it. All right, here we go. All right, any questions, dear, while we're going at this? <clears throat> um, well, 
Uncle Cat and said, my husband loves this recipe and said it was the best potato salad ever. Yay! It really is, guys. You're not going to eat a better potato salad. I guarantee it. Every time I take this to a church potluck, what family dinner, whatever, it is gone because it's just so delicious. It's none of that. doesn't have vinegar, none of that gross potato salad that you get in the store. As a matter of fact, people bring potato salad for stuff, and I'm like, oh, man, I don't want to have to gag that down. <laughs> Sorry, but this is just so delicious. Okay, here we go. So now we're going to put this in boiling pot of water. Okay, ready, Mike? Now, to put it in your water without it splashing, you can do it a couple of ways. You can take a spoon, so you have your water boiling, you can take a spoon and gently put it in like that, so you're not splatting boiling water on you. Or, you can take your spoon and just gently put it in there like that, okay? That way, you don't have... Um, boiling water splatting all over you okay so now we're gonna do our carrots now I like my carrots really chopped I don't I don't like them I don't like chunks I just don't so I cut them up in you know smaller pieces not tiny and then I take my food chopper and I whack my cares away. I just get all my anger and my frustration, all my being stuck at home with Mike and the kids for the last two months while the world has completely gone and lost their minds. I just take it all out on that, okay? Now, if you have a food processor, fine, do that. I do not own a food processor. I am looking for one on uh, a garage, well, they're not doing garage sales, but like um, the thrift store or something like that, I'm looking for one. Okay, so then I just chop it up. Mike, Mike. Yes. Mike. Oh. Mike, the mic. What do you usually do with the mic? That's a lot of frustration. I got them all out. I'm good to go for another two months now. Really? Okay. That's it, huh? <laughs> all right. So they're basically even pieces. And so then, now this is actually quite a few, but that's okay. Um, it's no big deal. Now, while we're waiting for the potatoes to finish, I was going to show you. This calls for onion powder and garlic powder. Now normally what I do is I just use my seasoned salt dining on a dime cookbook. We are on page, what page? For the 20th anniversary edition, the seasoned salt is on page 399 in dining on a dime, okay? So um, what I do I don't actually follow the recipe. What else is new? I just pour in about halfway full with salt. Now follow the recipe. I mean, it's no big deal. I used to follow the recipe and put it in a container and mix it all up, put it in a funnel and all that. Now I'm like, oh brother, ain't nobody got time for that. So then I put about two tablespoons of onion powder um, well, where'd my onion powder go? Oh, shoot. Okay, well, we'll pretend that I have two tablespoons of onion powder in here. I've got to go downstairs and get it from my stash. 
And then garlic. Now Mike likes extra garlic, so I put more garlic in it than most people. And then, of course, you have your paprika, okay? Then what I do, just to save myself the hassle, is I screw on the lid like so, and I just tip it and go back and forth and back and forth until it is all mixed together, okay? And you can see how it's mixing in, because this is clear, you know. Now I used to have a recipe card on here with tape. This bottle is probably 15 years old, if not older. <laughs> And it just got messed up, and now we just know this is the season salt, okay? Now, the other tip I want to show you is I have in my kitchen, so my kitchen is probably 20 feet by 4 feet, give or take. The other thing I want to tell you is I have 1, 2, 3, if you count season salt, 4. So I have... In my tiny little kitchen, I have four salt shakers. And you're going to be like, Tara, why do you need four salt shakers in your tiny little kitchen? Well, I will tell you why. Um, so I, the, world needs more salt. the world needs more salt, people. This one I keep over in my baking cabinet with all my baking supplies, the cinnamon, the baking powder, all of that. I keep this one there. This one I keep three feet away on the stove. So I'm not having to walk back and forth. And then I have a little one that is another four feet away on my kitchen table. Why do I do that? So I'm not walking back and forth all the time getting salt for each individual thing. Okay, well, hold on just a second. So, keep salt where you use it, okay? Now, can you see this section right here? Uh, yeah, the little tag? This little thing right here. Yeah, it's tiny, okay. I see it. Now, today, we had our carpet cleaned yesterday and I feel like a new woman went through and thoroughly cleaned everything up again in the living room and all the TV cords were driving me nuts. I was like, oh my goodness, do we need this many cords to turn on the TV? But I remembered a little hack that I saw on Pinterest, Facebook, who knows where I saw it. But this, this little tabby, tab, whatever you want to call it, is from the potatoes. Keep these things and take a permanent marker and then Put this on your cord when you have like, you know, the computer cord, the speaker cord, the TV cord, then you'll know which one to unplug. Is that not brilliant? So I'm saving all of these now and I'm using these for my cord identification and you don't even, you can come back up to me, this is a dramatic moment, you don't even have to buy anything, it's free. Okay. I miss the flailing motion. Okay, well, the moment is past. So, all right, so we're going to check our potatoes. It's been about five minutes or so. I'm at high altitude, so it does take a little bit longer. Now, you want your knife or fork or whatever you're testing to go in pretty easy. Now, that needs about one more minute, and then it will be done, and we are going to get our potato salad made. Where's my bowl? I forgot my bowl. That's all right. Okay, any questions, dear, while we're waiting the last minute? Um, well, somebody noticed you had a pampered chef chopper, but somebody else said that they have a black and decker one. It doesn't really matter. It doesn't right? matter. Yeah. That one I've just had for years before they had knockoffs. Um, before they had knockoffs, that was the one that was there, and I just had it for for years and so yeah okay other questions uh someone asked on the seasoned salt if you use less salt is that okay your mom said yeah just make it to your own taste seasoned salt do you use less salt yeah you can you can make it however you want that's what's the beauty of this recipe is you can adjust it up or down 
if you want less salt use less salt if you want like Mike likes more garlic then we put more garlic in so it just depends Couple people saying can't have potatoes, so we use cauliflower florets for the potato salad, and it works great. I was thinking mm. you should use that as a mention of the cauliflower cheesy cauliflower. Oh, for the cheesy cauliflower. So we have a cheesy cauliflower recipe right here, dining on a dime cookbook right there. Um, what page? Let's see if I can find it. I don't know if I can find it real quick. Um. It's another awesome Anyway, the cheesy cauliflower is really good. It's a head of cauliflower, and what you do is, um, oh, man, what you do is you bake your, or I mean you microwave, steam, however you want to do it, cook your cauliflower head. Then you mix mayonnaise, mustard, and seasoned salt, stir it together, put it on the cauliflower, add shredded cheese on top, put it back in the microwave till the cheese is melted, and it is so delicious it is so delicious it is so okay so now I'm going to drain my potatoes okay so let's see if I can do this without dumping them down the sink You had to do enough for the drum roll. What's the drum roll for what? What am I drum rolling today? When you're doing something unusual, like... Pouring water out of potatoes? Without dumping them down the sink. Oh, I see, yes. Okay. To show how awesome you are. <laughs> so I forgot I already had this bowl, so I'm not going to make another bowl dirty. Since Jack's home by himself, I told him I would make him mashed potatoes, his favorite, for dinner. So I'm going to make that. He said, Mom, make sure you put the sugar in because it's the best. I said, I will. Okay, now for the secret ingredient. Yes. Debbie wants to know how you can tell when the potatoes are done. Okay, so, cameraman, you tell when the potatoes are done. Are you coming down? Oh, well, hold on. Uh, I'm trying to get this camera turned on. Okay. Okay, you can tell when the potatoes are done by just putting a knife or fork in the potato. If it just slides in like butter, well, slightly harder than butter. Not quite butter, you don't want it as soft as butter because then your potatoes will disintegrate. But see how it's just kind of, it's barely resisting. I mean, it's not even really resisting, but you just poke it in and if your knife goes in, if you have to really push your knife or fork in, they're not done and leave them for just a few minutes. Okay, now, secret ingredient. You guys want to know the secret ingredient? Now, here's where we do the drum roll. Bacon grease. Every time I cook bacon, I store it in a mason jar in the refrigerator. Take your bacon grease and while your potatoes are hot, they need to be hot. Stir the, what? Okay, tilt it this way, I can see it. Oh. Stir until your bacon grease melts into your potatoes and your potatoes absorb that luscious yummy goodness. I guarantee you, you do this, everybody will love your potatoes. It's even better than putting in just bacon pieces. Bacon pieces is good, but when you do, when you let the bacon grease melt on the potatoes, it gets into every single potato and you have that luscious bacony flavor all over your potatoes, okay? So then, now, this is actually a huge amount of carrots. I think I'm gonna save about half of them for my garlic salad. Um, I think I'm gonna film that video tomorrow. All right, then we're gonna take our um, mayonnaise, okay? And then we're gonna take our dill pickle, woo! And then we're gonna add our seasoned salt. All this is in the description below. Stop asking me. Stop asking me for measurements. Go down in the description. The recipe is there on our website. Okay. All right. 
all our recipes are down there in the description on our website. Okay, so then you just mix it all together. And let me see if I can, oh dear, get a plate. Show you this luscious potato salad. There's your one serving of potato salad. <laughs> because it's so super delicious. That is good stuff, Maynard. All right, now, I wanted to show you guys, you can come over here now. First of all, well, Mike's getting moved over here. I wanted to, I wanted to read, read, um, read you guys something here um, that we got just the other day. And I was like, wow, that is impressive. Um, what are you doing? I'm trying to step around all the obstacles. <laughs> See why we need a bigger kitchen because he can't go on the other side because we have a light in the way. Uh, this is why, yeah. Okay, so I just wanted to say a big thank you for your cookbook right here, Dining on a Dime, 25% off, 22 bucks, cheapest price it's gonna be, guys. Just recent at livingonadime.com. I just recently started using it and I love the recipes in it. We recently retired and of course our income went way down and I love to make food from scratch, but when I worked it was semi-homemade. Well, I married a very wonderful Italian man who loves mostly his mom's cooking when it comes to Italian food. However, today I made your Italian sausage. Right here we have Italian sausage. Dining on a dime cookbook. Because I make homemade pizza from scratch and he loved it with capitals and exclamation point! Boom! Yes. So happy I found boneless pork chops on sale and ground them and ground beef and spices and just baked like it did a meatball to try it. He loved it going to make my barbecue pizza on Friday night. Which I used with your barbecue sauce too! We have the best barbecue sauce in here. That's my grandma's too, guys. Looking forward to more of your recipes. Sincerely a fan for years. Yay. That's awesome. Laura. Thank you, Laura. Isn't that great? And yeah. then Stuart says, thank you so much for the clothesline video. I'm going to paraphrase. He said he doesn't have a dryer right now, was clueless how to hang clothes up on a clothesline, and was so thankful that mom showed him how to hang pants and shirts the proper way. I was so they too. dry easily. I have to say, you're welcome, Stuart. My mom did that video. I have to say that um, every time I drive by a clothesline, it absolutely irks me to no end when clothes are improperly hung on the clothesline. And I just want to run over and say, can I please show you how to hang clothes properly on the clothesline? Really? I really I did not know you drives so me laid crazy back about most details. I do not like improperly hung clothes on the line. You have to hang the pants so that they are spread out. You don't hang them from the top, you hang them from the bottom. Why? Because the weight pulls the pants down and pulls the wrinkles out and they dry faster when the air is going up the pant legs. Then your shirts don't hang them by the top. I hear don't don't do that no please please what? stop doing that same thing you hang them down here by each seam then it hangs down your shirt shirt stays in shape and you don't have pin marks on your shoulder what? there you go see you didn't know that okay so let's test so the they're calling for a taste test oh mm. I have had not had this for so long. I should have watched this. Mm. <laughs> I didn't see what level I set the mic on. If it's too that loud. That is good. <laughs> Your wife is a good cook. Mm. I know it's her mother's recipe, but it's still good. It tastes like mm. summertime. I need to make this more often. I really do. It takes me right back to Lake Travis. Why? Because it's like a summertime picnic by the lake. I know. <laughs> the potato salad you had at Lake Travis was not as good as this. No, but it does. It's better, but it reminds me of that anyway. <laughs> Potato salad is a summer thing. Actually, mm. you're only going to give me one piece? That is good, yeah. 
So Kimberly wants to know for bacon grease, how do you strain it? Um, so my strainer, my children have lost my strainer. When we move, I'm sure I'll find it. That's why I'm not buying another one. I have a little strain, <clears throat> metal mesh strainer, fine mesh strainer this big that I use <clears throat> to strain it. And it gets out all the pieces and everything. And the best part is, if you don't use it for cooking, you can use it to make soap. There you go. Oh, Jackie says we don't have dill pickle in the UK. Do you have a recipe for that? Yeah, <laughs> I do. In this great cookbook called Dining on a Dime Cookbook. I think we might have it also on the website. Oh, I don't know if we have the dill pickles on the website. I don't know. When we were in the UK, did they have the relish? Probably mm -mm. not. Not like that. In the crazy American So section. all it is is ground up pickles, or I mean pickles. You did not. Okay. That's the dill relish. Let me tell you how to make dill pickles. If you're looking for a recipe and it's not on our website, it's cucumbers, vinegar, and dill. Salt, and I think that's it. Um, so you don't want anything like garlic in it. You don't want anything like sugar, nothing like that. So if you're looking for pickles in the store. Becky says, oh, I never strain my bacon grease. Well, depends on if I'm in the mood. Honestly, since I've lost my little strainer, I haven't been straining it. But, you know, you do what you got to do. We're getting ready. We're trying to find a house to move. I know it's here somewhere. Somebody just put it up in the wrong spot, and I'm going to find it when we move. I know I am because strainers do not grow legs and walk <clears throat> away. The wooden handle one? With the... No, oh. my little metal one. Hmm. that I love. So let's see, I just was madly throwing things in the comments so they may not be questions. <laughs> Dave isn't here right now, so I was trying to do, I realized that was a tough job for just one. <laughs> yes, Becky, how do I bury my scraps? So my scraps over there, I just pull my mulch back, drop down all my scratch, pull the mulch back forward. Now I don't have a problem with animals coming in my yard, but you shouldn't have a problem with that because animals usually only come if there's grease, like hamburger grease, bacon grease, or if there's meat or breads. If it's purely vegetables, with the exception of rabbits, most animals like mice, excuse me, and fox and raccoons, Usually, you don't have a problem. I've never had a problem with that, so. <laughs> yeah, for a while, you were just throwing things out the window. Yeah. <laughs> into the garden. <laughs> so my great-grandma literally it, used to throw the stuff right out the window. And she did that one year, and she was calling it compost in place or something yes. like that? <laughs> Actually, I have a whole video on our YouTube channel where I did it. So I need to bring that those videos back up again. So Cindy says, love your glasses, and she's not the only one. Thank and you. Quite a number of people were commenting about that. 50 bucks for $600 glasses. I think I got a good deal. Whoa. Carol Ann says, I would never have thought to add garlic and onion powder. So simple and yummy. So good. Oh, man. Yeah. It's like all my and favorite ingredients in one recipe. Leave the vinegar out. You have plenty of vinegar with the dill pickle, but leave the vinegar out. Um... Our kids went back to visit my mom and brother in Wichita, and then they are driving back with mom in 11 days when she comes out here to visit <laughs> us and my grandma. So, um. also I wanted to say, Cherry, thank you. She made me a towel holder. Oh, Oops, wrong way. Nice. Isn't that cute? It is cute. You just, that. so See, this is where the towel hangs. And you put this over, you put this over like this with that, the button. That is awesome. What a Isn't cool that looking cute? thing. Thank you. That, that is really cute. That was so thoughtful of you. Ooh, Marilyn says, I made it for a live show. Yes, just in time to see my garden harvest. You guys want to see my garden what? harvest? Oh. Wow. Did you need like a big bucket? I did. Yeah. You had to send the kids out on multiple I days did. to get that. <laughs> I got a radish 
today for my first of my garden harvest. So now I can say I harvested something. <laughs> Let's see what it tastes like. Oh, that's delicious. So why is that the entire garden harvest? It's all I got today. Oh, today? Yeah. I thought you were saying for the whole season. I, I guess this well, hasn't gone who yet. knows? It depends on when we move, if I'll have anything else. I've planted tomatoes, lettuce, potatoes. I have peppers and more tomatoes, but what I'm trying to figure out is do I put them in buckets or do I put them down in the ground? Because the problem is if I put them in buckets, the area that we're looking to move is a good two hours away. And so do we really want to be hauling 30 buckets of tomatoes and peppers down there in... You know you do. <laughs> I know. <clears throat> We found a house again on Sunday, drove all the way down there in the torrential rain, and I mean it was torrential, Colorado never gets rain like this, hardly. Like once or twice a year we get a rain like this. Horrid downpour. I was streaming live on Facebook, for those of you on Facebook. We got there, I kid you not, that living room had to be six by five. It was huge in the picture, like gigantic. Like, I was feet so by, mad. Yeah. Five hours it took us to go down there and come back because every time we go down there, it's a five hour trip to look even. So, five hours. So, I'm sick of these realtors using wide angle lenses on their pictures and you can't quite tell. And we suspected it. I was like, Mike, they only have two chairs in there. He's like, yeah, I know, but well, I, I knew said, it was a well, wide angle lens, but wow. And we were I've like, well, it has every qualification except that living room. We weren't sure. So let's just drive down there. Thankfully it was vacant. So we just walked around, didn't call, didn't have the realtor come with us. We just drove down there ourselves, walked around the property, got to be able to look into the living room windows. And we were like, what kind of an idiot has a 4,500 square foot house? 4,500 square foot house with a 30 square foot living room. Are you kidding me? <laughs> I don't know what planet these people are on. So Kimberly want to know, do you keep the baking grease in the fridge or on the counter? Fridge. I know some grandmas used to do it yeah. otherwise, but we... Well, here's the thing. The when grandma used to do it, when grandma used to do it, she would use bacon grease every day for every meal. Okay. So she would use it a whole lot quicker than we do now. <clears throat> so if you use it really fast, yeah, I'd probably be fine. But I just store it in the fridge and I don't have a problem. It lasts like six months in the fridge. You can freeze it and can it if you want also. So you said you just answered Kimberly's question. Oh no, Laura, how long does it keep in the fridge? Six yeah. months. Okay. Uh, Rebo is asking, did you use mustard? No. Our recipe doesn't have mustard. No. Right? The recipe doesn't have mustard, although occasionally I do add mustard so why in is there. It on the table? Well, I was going to show something else. <laughs> oh, okay. I had another thing I was going to show, and I've changed my mind. Uh, <clears throat> Nancy wants to know when we move to the house, how are we going to do the fruit in the freezer? So, when we go to the new house, hopefully within the next four weeks, we have to find a house in three to four weeks. Well, at the rate things are going with the printer, maybe not. We are having a major. I would say on a scale of one to a hundred, we are having a major 200 printer meltdown issue again. Mike about exploded his head all over the kitchen today, trying all over the dining room, I guess, trying to get it worked out. It's like in those old <laughs> horror films where the, the bad guys finally been eliminated and suddenly wah, he jumps up and he said this is like a freddy kroger move kruger kruger what's his name well freddy kruger is from one but i, I don't he said this is like a freddy kruger movie and you keep thinking he's dead and he's not he just keep coming back to haunt you <laughs> I keep thinking so anyway it's at the printer it's out of my hands thank goodness and then all of we, a sudden they're like nope we got the book to the printer come to find out we had a ton of issues with typesetting that we didn't realize we had He's been trying to figure out half of it. We don't even know what we're supposed to do. So we're trying to research it, figure it out, calling our wonderful friends, Goalie and Free. Hi, Goalie. In Fort Collins. 
saved our lives. Yeah. They own a printing company up there, which printed all of our uh, planners for us. And Fareed was able to talk Mike off the cliff. Thank you, Fareed. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. So he's Actually, with I us pretend, another day. I pretended to be calm when I called him. <laughs> hey, Fareed, what's happening? <laughs> yeah. So anyway. He's always calm. It's pretty awesome. Well, so, at least with me. <laughs> if we can get Dining Volume 1 to the printer by early next week and Dining Volume 2 to the printer next week, we will have about four weeks that we have to find a house. When we find that house in the four weeks, because I know God has something in store for us, because they, every single thing is going wrong. When we get, get it, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pack all the freezer stuff in cardboard boxes, lay newspaper over top, put them in boxes, unplug the freezer, load it on the truck, anything else we need to load on there, get our buns down there, plug the freezer in, and shove the food back in the freezer and it should be fine if we don't break down on the highway getting down there. If that happens, I'm just gonna leave it in its boxes and hope that it stays cold. When you have large things of meat, large things of milk, whatever, it will stay frozen a really long time, like eight hours, if you have several things packaged together. Now, if the truck breaks down and I'm sitting there on the highway and we get down there and everything is defrosted what would i do i wouldn't shoot myself in the head <laughs> even though i would want to <laughs> what i would do was i would get out the instant pot i would get out the dutch oven i would get out the crock pot which i need to go buy me one and throw all the meat in there and cook it and then refreeze it Okay, you can do that. If you have a power outage and it's been two or three days and your meat has finally started defrosting. Now, the second tip on that is if you have a problem like that, cook up or eat up the most expensive items first. So I have chicken in there, I have lamb, I have roasts, I have um, milk, I have some vegetables. So how would I go about doing that? I would eat the most expensive foods first. I would start with the lamb, and since hamburger and roasts are in a short supply right now, then I would do the roasts and the hamburger. You're supposed to be working, not eating a snack. This is not your 15 minute break time. <laughs> this is not your 15 minute break time. Oops, I'm sorry, I almost poked you in the eyeball. I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I've gotten good at it. Did you see me kind of go? <laughs> so then I would not worry about the free milk that I got. I would not worry about the vegetables that are fairly inexpensive. I would worry about eating up the most expensive things first and then work my way down. That's how you do that. Okay? So Jade says your plates are really pretty. What? Your plate. Oh, this plate? <laughs> oh, for some reason I was thinking, I never, never mind, sorry. Yes, this is Pioneer what? Woman from Walmart. Her and I have the same taste. Wow. Uh, okay, where were we? Yeah, I'm not sure what this means. Uh, Did you say the potatoes before you cook them? I don't know what that means, but I rinse the potatoes and then I just throw them straight in the boiling water. Well, I don't throw them. I gently lower them into the boiling water. <laughs> I could see somebody emailing us saying, yeah. Uh, Mary Beth, I always make extra eggs and boiled potatoes. Can uh -huh. you use throughout the weekend? Yeah. Other recipes. I do too. Usually it's just three of us this week, so I'm not doing a ton, but yeah. Oh, Jay says, if you wash veggies first, you can throw all the veggie scraps into four to six cups of water and make vegetable broth before throwing leftovers in. Yes, you can do that. I just don't because <laughs> I don't use vegetable broth that much. Jessica I should use it more though. Jessica was thanking you for this version since she can't eat eggs. Yay, you're welcome. And like Mike doesn't eat eggs, but I do. So what I'll do is I'll just boil up the eggs. And um, what I do is I put the eggs in the water first, let them cook about 10 minutes. Then I put the potatoes in and the eggs and the potatoes all cook in the same water. Missy, it was not an office by the front door, though that's a good idea. 
And somebody else asked about if there was a basement where they had a living area. The thing is, there was a beautiful view from that area, um, but it was on the back of the house on the deck. Yeah. And it was it had a fireplace and stuff, so it was intended to be a living room. But they did have a kind of a room they might have used as a family room downstairs, but it was kind of in the dark that you couldn't really see out much at all. And yeah. I would be surprised if they did that. Yeah. But it, what it appeared to me is that there was a, a really large master bedroom with a really huge bathroom yeah. that we could see. And a <coughs> fireplace between the two. <laughs> so That would be like my dream to have a fireplace while I'm sitting in the tub. So I'm wondering if when they bought the house, they or whoever built the house was primarily just a couple. Yeah, because there was a staircase behind the fireplace and there was no way, because we're good at saying, oh, can we knock down a wall? Another one came up today and I was like, well, can we knock down a wall? And we we're like, well, for that particular place, we'd have to walk down like four walls. And that really wasn't worth it. But yeah. So by the way, mom wanted me to tell you guys, all of you who bought soap from Ellie, she hopes you're enjoying her chocolate. My mother has issues. She has possession issues. Oh, with the chocolate? Yes. So I bought my mom and Ellie Easter chocolate on clearance after Easter. And I accidentally gave Ellie both bags and forgot to pull mom's bag out. And Ellie thought that I got them both for her. So she packaged them all up and sent them out with all her soap orders. So mom didn't get any. Now she did get one bag of Snickers. So don't go feeling sorry for her. She got a bag of Snickers. <clears throat> and her birthday is coming up in a month. Less than a month now. Her birthday is coming up less than a month now. She will, I'm, I will get her chocolate for her birthday. <laughs> so I won't be a complete failure as a daughter. <laughs> Just a semi failure as a daughter. By the a, way, today, what happened this time nine years ago? <laughs> today was moving day to this house nine years ago. Yep, today That's nine years ago. That's the longest we've ever lived in a house. The longest by like almost double. Let's see. The longest before that was, oh, yeah, by more than double. We've never stayed at a house more than four years, three years. Until now. And now we're going to move. <laughs> Actually, when we moved and into I this one. I can't wait. Thing is, when we moved into this one, uh, we moved from a state where the housing is not very expensive. And so we had a lot nicer house for a lot less money. And so when we moved here, uh, the house was a lot more expensive for a very little house. And so we thought this house would be a short stay between here and the next one. Uh, so nine years is a lot more than we intended when we bought it. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jennifer, I'm so sorry. Her mouth is all numb. Ugh. But I was still kind of laughing at her other comment. Yeah, Denise, <laughs> greasing toast with bacon grease would be delicious. So mom and I make bacon sandwiches for breakfast. And um, you could toast a piece of toast, put a little bit of bacon grease on there, and then put bacon and or jelly and then bacon, and it is so good for breakfast. Yeah, we do that one. Um, Lots of bacon grease love. <clears throat> yeah. All right. Um, you should get the blueprints of a house before you see the house. Yeah. They don't do that. I oh. do if they have them, but guys, here's the thing. I am not exaggerating. Houses are literally getting offers hours after they go on the market. Literally hours. Like 12 hours is too long. So I check my email no less than every 15 to 30 minutes to see if a new house has come on the market. Because I want to be the first, when it comes, I'm going to be the first one there to get it. Boofy's World said you should have put the radish on a pillow and been all fancy. <laughs> That's totally something that she would do. <laughs> Uh, and Amanda said they always make things look so big in photos. Yeah, the thing is, there's a trick to that. Yeah. But you actually have to make an effort to make that trick. And they, they really do their best to conceal that the photo is making it seem bigger. What I told mm -hmm. our agent, and he seemed to agree, is uh, when I go to a place with a certain expectation, and the first thing that, when I see it is kind of disappointment that it seems like it's less than what they advertised, mm -hmm. then I'm not likely to want to buy it. So I was, I'm surprised that agents do that. 
Because it is good to show the best qualities of something, but when you imply that the living room is four times as big as it is, then people are going to be dis, you know, disappointed with that. Of course, here in Colorado, people are throwing money at everything, so it doesn't necessarily matter, I guess, to them. Mm -hmm. but. Yeah. <laughs> My Daily Side. Yes, he got it. You missed the show yes. on Wednesday. It was wonderful. He was so excited. I did get it. Thank you so much. Actually, I was going to have it out today with some tea. I just... But totally with, forgot. Well, we're having a printer meltdown, like major printer. It's hard for people to understand. You can't just throw it in a program and it's fine. There are certain specifications. We are not using the correct program to do this because we are trying to get these books done. So we didn't want to take a month to learn a new program to typeset these books. But it has caused us several days or weeks worth of work. If it can't be repaired, we may have to go and retypeset the entire new book. We were going to have Dining 2 sent to the printer by today, and now it ain't going to happen. So I think with these two, we'll be able to push them along as much as they need to. I understand what they're needing. It's just not what any printer from yeah. us ever, has ever asked before. <laughs> and it yeah. was required a number of days extra work. So hopefully tonight, yeah. we'll be re, re, resending the first one to the printer. And tomorrow, hopefully, we'll be, or Friday, we'll be yeah. sending the second one to the printer. So and, you know, we going could, into the weekend, we could awesome. send it to a publisher, like a big publishing house. But guys, we literally get like 300% more profit by doing it ourselves. And after 20 years, I'll be darned if I'm going to let some publisher take all the work that I did because 95% of the work is in the marketing. It has nothing to do with the writing of the book. You can write the worst book in the world and if you market it, they will buy it. It has nothing to do with how good a product is. And so um, I'm not going to let a publisher take and give me... 3% or whatever it is, it's like 3% or something, because I'm doing all the work. So we'll take the extra six months and make 300% more profit. So but especially you, since now, now, now I know how to get them into Costco. I know how to get them into Bed Bath & Beyond, Books Are Fun, Scholastic, all those places. So shoot. Uh, Denise, Tara, what's the name of the place you get your glasses? I forgot. It's Zenny Optical, Z-E-N-N-I, online. Optical.com. And, and they don't pay us to say that, so we're yep. just saying that out of the goodness of our hearts. Because yeah. actually we get good deals there, so. Yeah. Uh, Tammy said, I love the goat milk soap. They're much bigger than they look on screen. Yeah. I didn't think of I didn't realize that. See, we need to use a wide-angle lens for the goat milk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's okay to use a wide-angle lens to show what it really looks like. Yeah, got no. Okay, don't put the link in there. She closed shop while she's gone. Oh, oops. <laughs> so if you guys want her soap, you can't buy it right now. She closed shop while she's gone. Oh, so. <laughs> oops. Here, I just threw it in there. Not a good plan. Okay, did you see all the ones over here? Uh, <clears throat> ooh, Cindy, I love my potato or macaroni salad made with dill pickles. I never thought about macaroni salad. Oh, Jessica's salad. had a good idea. Put your bacon grease in um, ice cube trays and then... That's two tablespoons of bacon grease if you need it for cooking. Wow. That's a good idea. For the regular sized ones. Um, okay, let's see what we have here. What Kathy, we... did you mention which potatoes are best? Whichever ones you have on hand. I use russet. I've used Yukon Gold. Pretty much it's just whatever you got on hand. Oh, happy anniversary, Nancy. Oh, yes, happy anniversary. Let's see... I'm looking to see. There's a lot of comment here that we didn't see before. Okay. So, By like, the way, my daily side, yes, I did get it. And I was going to have it on the show. I just, in the midst of the chaos from before the show, I forgot to bring it out here. So you'll see me with it. Uh, I, yes, on the show. Yes. So I have to tell you something funny Thank about you. Buster today. So Ellie's gone. They left at 5.30 and this morning. And Buster goes on his morning mosey. Ellie takes him on a morning mosey. We've <laughs> downgraded from a morning walk to a morning journey to a morning mosey. So I took him on his morning mosey this morning. We're walking along. 
and he decides he's done with his morning mosey. Okay, so he just turns around and starts heading back home. I'm like, okay, Buster, a block and a half is good. Wait, oh, you took him? Oh, I thought Ellie took Oh, that's right. She was... Well, when you were saying that, I was thinking it was her. And so he only went a block and a half and turned around and came home. Okay. <laughs> Ooh. Mm. Angie just made your best potato salad today, and it's chilling in the fridge. Wow. Yeah, I guess chilling is a good idea, but we couldn't wait. In fact... After, yeah. If it makes it to the end of the show, it won't last more than five yeah. minutes. I will say, Nancy, back to the freezer food thing for just a second. Normally, when I move, if I'm anticipating moving, I would eat everything. We, I would use everything I can out of the freezer before we move. But with meat sort shortages and that kind of thing right now, um, I'm trying to just, you know, ration it as much as possible. So... Uh, let's see. Wait, you missed. Oh, thanks. Living on a dime. I just paid off my car loan. Yes. Four months early. Great, Michelle. I just sent out three hundred, no, eight hundred dollars to pay off a credit card. Two more to go, and she's debt free. <laughs> like you go, Michelle. That is wonderful. That is awesome, Michelle. Great job. Wow. So liberating to have those things go away. <laughs> Yay! So we're are we so we're helping somebody. We're having a consultation with a big YouTube guru tomorrow and to let us know what we should do with our channel. <laughs> to make it better. <laughs> yeah. After this week, we were both like, that's it, we quit. <laughs> we're going to sell everything we own and live in an RV. <laughs> we'll let each kid have their own RV. <laughs> Oh, Mary Beth, love that you guys love Rocky Mountain National Park, especially Mills Lake and Bear, Bear Lake. I, yep. Do you, I, I, obviously you've been there before. Yes, we definitely Some love it. Some of our it. favorite spots. <laughs> uh, okay, so let's see. We Wait a minute, what cool. was that? Oh, hang on. Check out taxes before... Sorry. I was reading and you just popped it out of my way. I'm sorry. I didn't Check out taxes mind. before you commit. Texas has high property taxes. I know I live there and own. Yeah, we are definitely checking the taxes. We plan on having our house paid off. So taxes is a big deal for us because that'll be our house payment after our house is paid off. Um, and it's crazy. Like, you know, places like Wisconsin and Minnesota, we were thinking about going there and... The taxes are literally three to five times higher than they are here in Colorado. So much so that if we bought a house for half the price back there, it would cost us the same amount of money depending on what, bracket, what price range we went to, but it would cost the same amount of money over 30 or 40 years if we stayed in the same house for taxes versus paying the higher price here in Colorado. So Buster, Jack, so, it really does make a huge difference. Can you close the door? And like some people are like, ooh, sales tax. They have no sales tax. Guys, that doesn't matter. Sales tax, you have an option to pay. You don't have to buy those new cars. You don't have to buy those Starbucks. Property tax is pretty much set in stone unless you get something because you're disabled or something like that. So. Uh, okay, let's see. Back to here. Oh, Shelly, you helped me. I paid off two bills since I've been watching you six months ago. Yes, wow. Shelly, that's awesome. Oh, you go. <laughs> we that's need to sit on great. the other side from each other so I can reach the food, too. No. <laughs> Sorry. I worked hard on that chopper. <gasps> what? Okay, then. Um, uh, Darlene, send me an email if you... Send me an email about not getting your price book yet. Because I remember sending it. Hi, Michelle. Glad you made it. If... Send it to editor at livingonadime.com. How old is Buster? Buster is 16 at least this year. He could be older, but he's at least 16. Yep. So, all right, guys. Please check out our Dining on a Dime cookbook right here. 25% off. The price is going up, and we're not joking, guys. It's really going up. I'm not just saying that. It's $22 right now. The list price is going to be 
with the new book. Sorry, that's just the way it's got to be. We will have sales, but this, unless we find a house tonight or tomorrow or in the next 10 days, <laughs> this is going to be the cheapest it is. If we find a house and we have to get rid of our rest of our stock really, really fast, um, I might mark it down more, but I doubt it. We only have like 25 days worth of books left at the current rate we're selling. So I think it just gives, gives and takes, you know, some days I'll sell a whole bunch of books and then other days I'll only sell a couple. So, but at my current estimation, that's what it is. So don't yell at me if I have books in August. I wasn't lying to you. I wasn't trying to get you just to buy it. I'm just warning you because every single time this happens, I get emails from people who are angry that the price went up or they missed out on the good deal. So I'm just forewarning you. And of course, if you don't have the money, just go to livingonadime.com and we have like a lot of the recipes on our website. So anyway. Oh, Jane says, couldn't you leave the food in the freezer and lock it when you move? I never thought Yes, that. we could, Some but tape. I don't know that they would be able to lift the freezer. I mean, oh, I I've got to have, I've right. got to have at least a hundred pounds of meat in there. You're right. Yeah, I didn't A hundred pounds? Let's see. I've got five, 10, 15, 20, 20. Yeah, I've got to have at least a hundred pounds of just meat. Before we go, we have to say it's DJ's birthday. <gasps> Happy birthday, Happy birthday DJ. DJ. Awesome. Yay. You picked the best show to, to watch on your birthday. All right, guys, please visit us at livingonadime.com. Check out our Dining on a Dime cookbook and our aprons. Get it together, people. Peepla put her name <laughs> put her name on it. She sent me an email. Oh, did she? <laughs> so nobody would take her apron. <laughs> like I love like it. crochet or uh, sewed it or whatever? She sewed it on there. Like like the L on the Vernon Shirley? Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, that was pretty funny. I was pretty impressed. All right, guys. Mike has to go to the Dave spot now. <laughs> we will see you on Monday. Please like, subscribe, and share. Please visit us at livingonadime.com. And we will see you on Monday.